Hey guys, this episode we are going to be diving into the normalizes method in Rails 7.1 that is just about to be released, and we'll show you how you can use this to clean up your code in your Rails applications. So this feature really uh, is aimed to tackle the normalizing of things like email addresses, phone numbers, maybe you have uh, users putting in decimals for an amount in uh, like a price on an order, and then uh, you want to be able to convert that to like the integer version of that. And you need to normalize that input data so that it is saved properly in your Rails app. So let's take a look at an example here. Uh, I have a couple options for doing this. So one is before validation. So we can have this uh, phone number strip out any non-digit characters and remove those and replace them with an empty string. Um, and that is one option. The other option is to actually do it immediately on assignment. So when you uh, assign a new email address, we can strip out the white space characters at the beginning and the end of the email address, and then we will pass that over to Super so that we can have that uh, email set in the database. So if we were to do this, uh, what we'll see here, let me clear this out. That is the order model that I made, just had some examples of amount, phone, and email address. If we were to say order.new, we can pass in a phone number, uh, and we'll do one like 1-800-555-555, and a tab character at the end, and we'll do another email address as well, chris at gorails.com slash T space space, um, and we'll assign this to the letter O. So here we go uh, with our example. You can see here that the phone number's value is kept the same as what was given to it, but the email address is uh, normalized immediately. So that's because we are assigning the email value um, and the stripping is happening immediately when it is assigned. On validation, we are only going to do that when we call order.valid um, or order.save, you will see that that will change that. And you will see that the phone number strips out any of those non-digit characters, um, non-integers, and everything is um, good here. So this works fine, but it means that we have to override all of the setters in our Rails app. We have to do things like, oh, you know what? If order.new email is nil, it's gonna blow up. So we've gotta handle uh, nils and other things like that. So you'd have to use the safe operator or an if statement and other things um, as you do this. And same thing will happen for phone number. If we were to say dot valid here, it is going to blow up on the email address being assigned. And if we leave that out and don't assign it, it's going to blow up on the phone number being nil. So you'd have to make sure every single place that we do this, we use the safe operator. So in order to improve this and make it a lot easier in Rails 7.1, you now have the normalizes helper in your models that you can say, all right, phone is normalized with uh, this. And you can either say, here's the phone and phone G sub slash capital D plus slash empty string, and that will work for normalizing the phone numbers. So let's reload this, and then we'll call order.new.valid. Um, oops, I meant to add with colon here to give it the uh, lambda. Then we can reload, try this one more time, and you'll see that it works just fine. And one of the reasons for that is because normalizes will not, by default, apply to nil values. So it's going to ignore those and won't call this um, this lambda here with the phone number uh, on it. So we don't have to even worry about handling that. We will know that it's not blank. So that's pretty cool and a nice little improvement. Other things you can see here is that if you use the numbered parameter syntax, you don't have to define phone, phone, phone three times. You can just say validate, normalizes phone with G sub slash D plus and so on. So it makes it nice and clean and uh, normalizes email would get refactored to the same thing with one dot strip and that would be it. So now we have these nice inline clean little um, helpers here for validating or normalizing those rather. And then we can reload again and go up to our first example here. 
And you'll notice that this applies immediately. So this is effectively doing the override of the setters for you in order to have the normalization applied. Now, there's a really cool thing that you get out of this as well. And you can say, um, normalize value for, and you give it the name and you say, here's my email that I want to valid, uh, normalize. And you can do this without having to instantiate a new order. So you can have, um, you know, support at gorails.com with a bunch of spaces on it and it will give you back that value. So this right here is super duper handy because you could use this in like form objects, you could use it in uh, the reply, like the response from a JavaScript request. So if you want to like have your form input, go ask Rails, hey, would you normalize this for me? It could send it right back and then you could use that in your form and kind of like format um, based upon what's gonna be done on the server side. So you can have a single place that knows how to do that. Uh, that can be pretty handy. And uh, that is about it for normalizes. The options you have are with, which is any callable object. So it could be a lambda, a proc, um, a block. It could be a class that you instantiate and have um, the call method applied and all of that. Uh, apply to nil is default to false so that it is going to skip that. So you don't have to worry about all those little uh, nuances of that. You also probably want to call down case in the email example. It's a good, good point out here, but uh, it's important to know that so that you can see that the normalizing is going to uh, not have to worry anymore about nils and it do the safe operations and stuff. It can just be a lot more concise this way, which I like. Um, and if you look at the source code for this, it is actually pretty straightforward when you define these um, you can give it multiple names and have the same width applied to them. So you can do that uh, as well. So if you wanted all of them to be exactly the same, you can. And then um, it's just fun to look at the source code for this. Uh, so you have the normalize attribute method that you can call to. So if you want to um, apply this and you've got an email that is already like maybe in a fixture or something that's... Uh, a value and you want to just tell it to normalize that specific value, you can just say, hey, normalize this attribute and it will go ahead and do that, which is cool. So you can apply this to stuff that is already in your database. It hasn't been normalized properly. That's super handy um, and not really documented very well here because I don't think it's even mentioned unless maybe it's under, there it is, um, the module. So the uh, class methods are generally where the implementation for this is because these are class methods on your models. Um, and then if you want to see how the normalized value type works, so that is basically what does the casting. So the normalizer is your callable object, normalize nil, cast type, and so on. Um, and then it saves that to your normalized attributes then you can see how this actually works. It will go look up, type for that attribute, and then cast it. So then it knows um, which one of these normalized value types to grab, and then how to normalize it. So this is pretty neat and very, very short, not very much work uh, on the Rails side of things to make this possible, which is awesome. Uh, but I love seeing, you know, how these are uh, defined inside of Rails itself because it gives me some ideas of, you know, building my own little class methods for um, doing certain things like this that might be custom to an application or something. Uh, so anyways, that is it for this episode. Normalizes is definitely one of my favorite features that is coming out in Rails 7.1. It is just going to make uh, a lot of methods that I've overridden in old applications, a lot cleaner, a lot more straightforward. They'll all end up being one-liners instead of a method override that has the definition, the actual logic, and then an end at the end. So it'll compress all those down and make my models even simpler and straight, more straightforward. So I'm looking forward to upgrading all of my apps to Rails 7.1 beta to uh, take advantage of this, and I'm sure you are as well. So that's it for this episode. We'll be back with more Rails 7.1 improvements in the next few episodes.